Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can Offshore Mussel Farms Help to Repair the Ocean? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Aquaculture, Fish, and Fisheries, published on October 17, 2022. Research conducted by Danielle Bridger, Lucia Massacorda Cabre, Sian Rees, Emma Sheehan, and others from the School of Biological and Marine Sciences at the University of Plymouth in the UK. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Lots of people around the world love eating seafood. Unfortunately, some fishing practices harm seafloor habitats. Is there a way to enjoy resources from the ocean and help the environment at the same time? Mussels are a kind of shellfish that can be farmed at sea and collected for food. They grow in clumps, which may attract other animals looking for food and shelter. We wondered if building an offshore mussel farm could help restore ocean habitats damaged by years of harmful fishing practices. We used underwater videos to investigate how the number and type of animals found inside and outside a mussel farm changed over four years. We found that the areas inside the farm contained more mussels than areas outside. There were also more fish and seafood, such as lobster and crab, inside the farm than outside. Our findings show that offshore mussel farms may revitalize damaged ocean habitats. They also benefit humans and other marine animals. Introduction. When you hear the word farm, you might think of some land used to raise plants or animals for food, but people farm underwater too. This is known as aquaculture. Aquaculture may be one solution for feeding the world's growing human population. Mussels are a type of shellfish that can be farmed using aquaculture. We create mussel farms by securing long lines of rope in the ocean, held afloat by buoys. Young mussels attach themselves to the ropes and grow there until farmers harvest them. In their natural environments, mussels filter debris from the water and help build habitats for other ocean animals. Plus, they remove carbon from the ocean which helps fight climate change. But when mussel farms are located in sheltered areas close to land, waste can build up on the sea floor. This changes the habitat and drives other animals away. We wondered if building a mussel farm offshore would be a better option for the environment. Here in the photo, you can see mussel farms contain long lines of rope which young mussels attach themselves and continue to grow until they are harvested. Fish and other fast-moving animals can swim around them. In the photo, you can see two vertical lines of mussels. Three fish are swimming in the upper half of the photo. Methods. We studied the Lime Bay Mussel Farm, located off the southwest coast of England. This area was probably once home to lots of mussels and a variety of other marine life. But years of destructive fishing practices harmed the seafloor habitat. We investigated if building a mussel farm in this area could restore the habitat. We monitored the quantity and types of animals found in four areas within the mussel farm over four years. We compared that to the animals found in four areas outside of the farm, which served as controls. Three types of underwater video cameras recorded the number of mussels and other animals at our sampling sites. They captured footage inside and outside the mussel farm. We used a towed underwater video system and a remotely operated vehicle to look at the number of mussels and slow moving animals, such as crabs and starfish. We also used a baited remote underwater video system to look at fast moving animals, such as fish. We watched and analyzed the videos to see if there were differences in the number and types of animals inside and outside the farm. We then looked for changes across the four years. 
In figure one, you can see the location of the Lyme Bay Muscle Farm. We monitored four farm sites and four non-farm control sites. The farmed areas are shown in blue and control areas are in red. The Muscle Farm location is seen in the pink hatched areas and labeled site one and site two. In the upper right corner is a map of the UK with a small black square at the southern end to indicate Lyme Bay. Results. We observe mussels growing on the ropes and on the seafloor under the ropes at the farm sites within six months of their setup. The number of mussels at the farm sites increased over time, but we never recorded any mussels at the control sites. The number of slow-moving animals was similar between the farm and control sites and did not change much over time, but we saw different species in the two areas. Inside the farm, there were more animals important to fishermen, such as lobsters and crabs. Outside of the farm, we saw more sea snails and anemones. We found more fast-moving animals at the farm sites than at the control sites. This included fish that are valuable to fishermen, such as mackerel and whiting. Over time, the number of fast-moving animals increased at the farm sites and decreased at the control sites, as predicted by our model. In figure two, you can see our model predicted a change in the total number of fast-moving animals in the farm sites, in purple, and control sites, orange. The colored areas represent the confidence intervals according to the model. The vertical dashed line shows when the first ropes were installed in the muscle farm. On the x-axis of the graph you can see time in years and on the y-axis you can see the number of fast-moving animals. Looking at the graph, how did the number of fast-moving animals change over time at the farm sites? What about outside of the farm? at the control sites. Discussion. Our study showed that building an offshore mussel farm can restore a damaged seafloor habitat. Over time, the number of mussels in the farm areas increased and they clumped together. This created places for other animals to live, look for food, and hide from predators. The ability to create habitats for other animals makes mussels ecosystem engineers. We observed more fish, including species that fishermen catch, in the farmed areas. Fish may like mussel farms because fishing boats can't reach them there. But the high numbers of fish in the mussel farm appear to spill over into neighboring areas where fishermen can catch them. So, mussel farms do not only mean more mussels for people to eat, they can also help boost the populations of other fish that are caught for food. This study is the first part of a long-term project investigating how the Lyme Bay mussel farm affects the surrounding ocean ecosystem. There is still more to learn about the environmental changes associated with offshore mussel farming, but these initial findings could encourage people to move more aquaculture installations offshore. We hope this research will lead to more responsible use of our ocean resources and healthier ocean ecosystems for people and animals. Conclusion. Offshore mussel farms provide one kind of sustainable seafood. Supporting sustainable seafood will help ensure that ocean resources are available for years to come. Here are a few ways you can enjoy seafood responsibly. Avoid eating ocean animals whose populations are low. Check out Seafood Watch to see which species are overfished. Find friendly alternatives. Buy fish and seafood that have been farmed or caught sustainably. Look for the blue Marine Stewardship Council tag or the green Aquaculture Stewardship Council tag. These labels indicate that seafood comes from a sustainable fishery or aquaculture farm. And eat local seafood when you can. It is often caught using less damaging fishing practices than commercially caught seafood. Thank you for listening to this recording. 
Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.